1970 Cadillac Eldorado customizing kit by Johan. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. Hello once again model car builders. Are you ready to go on a fantastic skiing trip in our amazing front wheel drive 1970 Cadillac Eldorado by Johan? Well, if you are, you're in for a great treat because coming up in a few seconds, I'm going to rip open the lid on this thing and we're going to, going, to, going to get to see one of those rare old kits from Johan that's no longer in production, but everybody wants one. So before we do that, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first one to see it. And if you want new model cars that are in production, check us out at www.monster-hobbies.ca in our model car section. There's a ton there. I know, because I put them all in. <laughs> all right, now without further ado, let's go visit our Cadillac showroom and see what's in the box. Demand for the front wheel drive Eldorado personal coupe was on the rise for 1970 and here we have an amazing example of the old Johan Eldorado 1970 customizing kit and this thing is pretty cool as you can see that they kind of customized it for the Swiss Alps here <laughs> with all these different ski logos and whatnot on here. Now I have a little confession to make I did start to work on this car at some point back in the past, but I figured this was a significant model here for our model kit reviews, so you're going to have to forgive the half-built version. But anyway, it doesn't matter. On the side of the box here, we can see the amazing looking stock variation of this kit, painted in a like brown color, metallic brown, which was a popular choice getting into the 70s. You'll see that many, many times over and over. This is a build a highly detailed showroom version, many plated parts. Cadillac in the park. <laughs> okay, the end of the box looks much the same. Ooh, everything crashing in there. Now this is a later re-release because you can see, of course, the barcode. The originals wouldn't have had the barcode because that came out, well, came out in the mid-70s, I guess. Here we have a front-wheel drive 472 cubic inch engine, chrome pedals, racing mirrors, pair of chrome ski racks, two pairs of skis and poles, triple bucket seats, a latham blower assembly, a tachometer, inside mirror, custom wheel, and exhaust extensions, and a custom air scoop. All these cool little parts in here. Oh, getting all rattled around. So now we'll just pull the lid off the box. And first off we have our instructions. It says bought at Pioneer Arts and Crafts October 19, 1992. I've had this a long time. For $16.99, which was considered pretty high back then. Okay, we'll take a look at those in a minute. There's our really cool looking decal sheet for the Alpine Ski Resort. Winter Ski Resort, I guess. Here we have our Cadillac body and hood put together. Now, like I said, I was working on this. <laughs> so, the white wall tires. I think I painted those white walls myself. Distributor on there. The interior. Painted it flat black underneath, and I guess I got some blow in here. Rear bumper the front stock seat. Now I don't know if I have all the custom pieces in here considering you know I was working on it and wanted to build it factory stock. There's a Cadillac motor with the interior or the uh, suspension all put together. Looks like it's got torsion bar suspension there. Front fenders, inner fender aprons here I guess they're gonna go on and so I guess over here, like this. Put them on that stick for painting, of course. So glass. The front bumper. We got all the little parts in here. 
so many bits. Yeah, I don't see those bench seats anywhere. But anyway, yeah, dashboard. All kinds of cool stuff in here. Radiator walls. Yeah. So I think what I'll do is I'll just clear this all out of the way and then we'll get into our instruction sheet. And here we have our instruction sheet for 1970 Cadillac Eldorado. And Johan, here I'll just zoom back a little bit. There we go. Johan usually had a one sheet instruction set, but they would print it on both sides, as we can see here. So what we'll do is we'll go through panel by panel and see what each of the little illustrations are. And here we have our massive Cadillac engine going together. And as you can see, the engine block is molded solid, much like the old Ravel kits. Uh, all the nice detail in here gets covered over by the cylinder heads, the valve covers, the intake manifold. And then on top of that, you have your four barrel carburetor, your nice Cadillac scripted valve covers the uh, front engine cover, the oil filler, the oil pan, power steering pump, the pulleys, the alternator, and the fan. There's the coil going on there, as well as we have our transfer case here, our starter motor, a nice chrome panel for the back of our transfer case, as well as a pan underneath. And then these three pieces are the front of the transfer case, where our universal joints and whatnot are going to be going through. And just below that on our instruction sheet, we have the chrome pedals, the dashboard, the steering column, our steering wheel, our bench seat, and the interior bucket. After the engine is assembled from the first step, we can now drop it into our chassis here. There's our exhaust pipes going out, which will connect underneath. We have a solid metal axle in the back with our three-piece wheel and tires. Uh, there's our universal joints going together once you get your engine in there. And then we've got our radiator wall and radiator. It's molded as one piece. There's the upper radiator hose going together. There is um, front kingpins and steering as well as all the different braces and our uh, tie rods here. Oh no, this is tie rods. This is the undercarriage. It says, note, assemble procedure, assembly procedure for tie rods and spindles. Slip one spindle over drive shaft and cement to upper A-frame on chassis. Locate one end of tie rod to spindle steering arm. Slip other spindle over drive shaft and cement to upper A-frame. Locate free end of tie rod to spindle steering arm and cement both ends into position. Note, by, ro by rotating, make sure notches fit together inside differential. So this is quite an, a complex operation up here for that front wheel drive. But with a bit of patience, you should be able to get it. Next up, we have the body assembly with our gigantic Eldorado body going in place. They show the windshield under here and the rear glass sort of transparent through the body. That's just so you understand it goes up inside. There's a rear view mirror. There's our front inner aprons, which glue to the body, not the frame. And then our battery will drop in on that side. There is a nice heater motor blower arrangement there. And our, our uh, brake master cylinder. The firewall is actually molded to the bucket, which is quite nice. <clears throat> and then all this goes in. There's some little retainer clips that will go on the ends of these posts in here as well. Now our last panel on our instruction sheet is printed vertical, hence I had to tip the camera. Here's our ski racks and our skis going together, which is sort of an optional thing. Then we've got our tail lights and our rear bumper. The hood goes down. There's this thing. Not quite sure what that is. Uh, the top of the radiator uh, going on there with a fan shroud molded in. And then our front bumper and the whole body popping together. It says, note, sport wagon may be made from either stock or custom versions. Send Eldorado name and rear side marker lights from the body sides. Apply wood panel decals to the sides and 
rear deck. So this is really small and I'm trying to read uphill. Uh, rear deck. Guide skis and pulls through two ski racks and position about equal distance from uh, equal distance from each end. Uh, leave loose cement ski pole rings to poles. Position and cement ski racks to rear deck lid. <laughs> Position them to the rear deck lid uh, with short legs toward rear window of car. Okay, so that's basically how you put your skis into this arrangement and sort of when and where. And a bit of the uh, decal stuff as well. So you're, you're getting rid of some of the side details so you can put on that wood grain decal. Now if we turn our instruction sheet over, this is how to build the custom version of the El Dorado. So we'll take a look at these panels next. And here's our custom Eldorado motor. As you can see, it shares most of the components, actually 99% of the components, with the stock version. Oh, I realized what that funny drawing was. That was the air cleaner going on. It's just the way it's drawn on the instructions. It looks like some weird, I don't know what. Anyway, there's our engine block, our valve or our cylinder heads, pardon me, our valve covers up top with Cadillac on them, the intake manifold. And here we have that Latham blower assembly going up there. Our distributor at the back of the motor. A coil up front. Maybe that's not a coil. Anyway, there's our water pump and our filler tube. The pulleys on here are just a simple arrangement for the blower. And then we've got our transfer case details all in here, much like the stock version. Our custom version is very much the same as the stock version, with the exception of the triple bench or bucket seat, pardon me. And now you can get away with a triple bucket seat in these cars because being front wheel drive, there's no transmission hump. So here we have our custom steering wheel going on here, our uh, steering column, the tachometer, and our dashboard, the chrome pedals again, and our interior bucket with that firewall molded in place. And now on to our custom chassis assembly. This is identical to our stock assembly. The only difference being, of course, that this motor is going to have that Latham blower assembly up top. But basically, you drop your motor into the chassis again. There's your upper radiator hose, your radiator and support wall all your universal joints and your kingpins. We've got these uh, brake backing discs that are going on there. There's our whole suspension assembly, which is torsion bar style. And then we've got our braces and everything in there. The rear wheels have the custom uh, wheel in there instead of the stock hubcap, as on the other side. And even the assembly procedure is the same with the tie rods and spindles. Next up is the body assembly, which again is identical to the stock, except they do show the triple bucket seat there. <laughs> okay, so our body goes together, the glass pops up, the windshield, or the uh, rear view mirror goes in, the little aprons in the front with our batteries going on, there's a blower assembly for your heater, as well as your brake booster master cylinder there. The interior bucket pops in and then held in in the back by those retainer clips. Next up we have our final assembly for the car and here we have that ski rack going together again, our rear body, the tail lamps, the custom rear bumper, then it's got these sort of overriders or something that go in. This could also be our stock exhaust system, the uh, special exhaust extensions and then we will just push this up here for change. Okay, and then we've got that teardrop shaped hood scoop which will pop in. There's actually a hole on the bottom of the hood, we'll see in a minute. You can cut that through if you want. Sport mirrors. There we've got these blanks up front. And then this long sort of George Barris style front grill and roll pan underneath. So that's our custom front end for this. There is no custom back end, unfortunately. Oh wait, what am I talking about? Yeah, it's right there. 
Okay, but this would be our custom Cadillac all smoothed out with nice big blower scoops and whatnot. And that completes our look at our instruction sheet for our Eldorado. And here we have our Cadillac Eldorado E body, which is E for uh, exciting. No, I don't know. <laughs> but there's our front wheel drive. Let's just go back a little. There we go. Get the whole thing in. So as you can see, it's got the perfect profile for the 1970 Cadillac Eldorado. And Johan did a beautiful job of sculpting this. There's our Eldorado script down there. Lots of molding on here. So if you've got bare metal foil, this would be a beauty. There's our side marker lights, turn signals, whatnot. GM door handle. It's got the Coke bottle kick in here. Along the panel line. Like the uh, teardrop shaped rear window, or angled. Very nicely done. You can see on the back here all the nice Eldorado script and everything. I do believe I wanted to paint this black back in the day. It's been so long since I looked at this though. Should be quite a nice kit once all put together. Front end looks very uh, open. You can see the notches way back here. That's where your bumper is going to lock in. And there's the pins for your interior. A couple of mold marks on the top of the roof. There's no extra detail like uh, pleating or anything in here. So you just have to scrape those down with your number 16 hobby blade. Uh, other than that, quite a nice example of the real Cadillac body. Now, because uh, this is all in pieces as I was working on it, I can show you the hood here right away. You can see the nice detail molded in sort of a cream color. It's Cadillac script right on the front of the hood. So underneath you've got the mat molded in. There's the notch for cutting out your blower. Uh, nice um, supports in here under the hood. There are some deep mold marks. So you might need some putty to fill those in if you're going for perfection. The hood hinges are molded in place. And it's interesting that it's notched like this. I'm not sure on the real car if it was notched or not. It must have been. <laughs> so for you guys that are in the know, write it in the comments down below. I can't see why it wouldn't have been actually. Okay, never mind. All right, so as with most of these hinges, they will fit into the car a little bit. Then you need to spring them into place. So let's see if this will work. Now. There we go. Now you can see a nice fit and finish on here. There is a bit of a gap with the fenders, but I do believe once you put the grill in place, it should bring them together a little tighter. Now, carrying on here with our car, we do have the front grille in chrome. A little bit of my chrome rubbed off on the points, but you know, what can you expect? I painted that license plate white in there. I was trying to make my own sort of museum plate, paint the numbers red. There's your turn signal it's up front. A couple little pins on the back of the front bumper. Paint all this flat black in here so you can't see it when you open the hood. Now this will go in there. Those points on the back of the... Uh, on those turn signal lamps. I hope I can get this out after. <laughs> okay, and then there's the front of our El Dorado. As you can see, that actually looks cool bringing it up like... Alright. So there's the front of the Eldorado, and here's our rear bumper. Again, painted those little license plates in there. A Cadillac taillights go up into those slots. And then rear bumper will just slide in there like that. And there's our Eldorado body, hood, and front and rear chrome. Oh. And before I go here, there's our glass. I thought I'd just show the front windshield for now. There is, of course, the red tail lights. Then our glass is going to just drop in there. Just like so. So you can see this is quite simple. And again, it's got the connected bits in between here on our glass. 
which is typical of a 70s, 60s and 70s type of mold for a Cadillac. But again, I mean, this is quite an impressive shelf model once we get it all together. And now let's take a look at the other components. Now here we have the chassis for El Dorado, which of course I've done extensive work on, as you can see here. So we've got our engine and everything all glued together and everything stuck in the frame and sub-assembly and all that. So I can't really show you too much, but we'll just take a look at uh, the details of it. Not sure when I'm ever going to finish this. Okay, it's got molded on exhaust pipes underneath here. And of course our rear kind of dummy axle, because it's not driven, so... Or powered, because everything's up here in the front on that transfer case. There's our exhaust pipes going in, all molded in place. The nice muffler crossover in here. And whatnot. <laughs> nice detail underneath on our gas tank. Which I should actually paint this steel. See, there's the thing, eh? when I when you build these things back in the day, you don't really know too much about this. Like I said, I graduated in 1992, so I was 18 at the time when I bought it, at least. It might have been my early 20s when I built this, so I'm not sure anymore. <laughs> time slips on by, as we all know. Again, you can see nice detail work in here. I, I don't know, I think I got this engine crooked, eh? What do you think? Looks like it's sloping over this way. <sighs> Who knows? Young me. <laughs> anyway, so mm, I hope it's going to be all right. But uh, yeah, you know, you get older, you learn more about cars, and you know more about how to build the models. And here we have our interior, which I've sort of semi assembled here. I'm just going to zoom in a bit. There we go. This will look better. Okay, so as you can see, we have our interior bucket. We've got some back blow, I guess, from uh, shooting in here, this way. Um, now this is a in, uh, bucket. There are some mold marks there and there, which you can't really see because of the paint. Okay, so if we take this and turn it over, you can see there's a bit of detail in here, which when the chassis goes on, let's see, it should be... Yeah, right in this zone here. So there you go. Some nice work in there. Yep, pretty basic uh, underneath. There's our firewall molded in place. Looks like kind of got some shiny finger there. There's that heater motor. Whoops, while we're here. Which will pop in here. I think it's this way. There we go, for that nice detail in there. And then our brake master cylinder and booster will end up here. I know I got that upside down, so there we go. All in all, looks pretty good once you get that part together. Now, I can pop that off right now, that's fine. So we'll move into our dashboard here. See the nice gauge detail in here, all the different instruments. Nice and smooth, looks like a real El Dorado um, instrument panel. Now that being said, we have our steering column here. It's chrome plated. Now I cut, I cut the chrome tree all up when I was young, just to get it to fit in the box again. So that'll be have to be special, uh, cleaned up specially. There's our Cadillac El Dorado steering wheel. Oops, typical triangle style of the popular at the time. And uh, that would go on there. And then you get your nice dashboard. Okay, moving this off to the side. This, of course, fits nice and well inside our interior, just like so. Our front bucket seats match the back ones, as you can see here. The nice pleating on them. Very well done. Single piece, and of course pops into the holes. Now I'm not sure what happened to the triple bucket seat for the Custom, but there it is regardless. And of course we've got our chrome pedals sitting here, which will go underneath that dashboard. Uh, not 
actually sure how it goes underneath the dashboard. <laughs> but it'll go underneath there regardless, or perhaps it even glues up in here somehow. Yeah, hard to say. I have to study those instruction sheets and figure it out. But overall, <laughs> quite an impressive interior, even though I just threw it together. So now let's take a look at some of the other components. And here we have the extra details for under the hood. We've got the fender aprons. There's our radiator hose, our battery, our upper and lower um, supports in here, as well as uh, fan shroud covers and whatnot. There's our radiator and radiator wall support, exhaust pipes, the air cleaner, this little brace, I'm not sure where that goes. I'll have to find out in the instructions. And our distributor here for our motor. Now, these front fender aprons, in the instructions they just show you, you know, gluing these to the side here on the inside of the car. Now, I'm not exactly sure, it, really, once we stop throwing the parts all over the place, how these glue on. There is a bit of, like, inner mark, uh, like line marking things in here, which I do suspect you're supposed to glue this onto. But maybe another possibly better way to do this is to potentially attempt to glue this just like on the frame in here. There we go. I don't know. It if you guys have built this in the past, let us know in the comments down below what is the easier way to do it. To glue these on the top here like that, or to attempt to glue it in the body and then hope that when you drop this thing together, it aligns perfectly and doesn't sit like up here or something stupid and or make the, you know, the chassis like this in the front. I know that's highly exaggerated, but you know what I'm saying. So anyway, there's our front aprons. So here's our battery. Now, I've glued this up so that it can be painted. I do believe those terminals, I just scraped off the paint and left the uh, cream-colored plastic underneath. There's some braces go up underneath, I think, at the front. And then here's the top of the radiator there. You can see it's not perfectly center, it's actually offset. It should be... Well, that's interesting, it's not quite reflected on the radiator here. But that'll go in, glue in there like that. And for our radiator, I've painted that flat black. You can see it's quite uh, pushed in, in front of your Cadillac. So there's those components. Exhaust pipes basically straight. Yeah, and well, I guess that's about really all I can show on these without starting to turn this completely boring. So there's our parts there. And here's our final amount of the open parts for our Cadillac kit. Here, of course, we have the tires. And I painted in the white wall using my tire spinners and some latex house paint, actually. Back in the day, back in 92 or whenever, there's our Cadillac wheel covers. There's our rear axle, our rear wheels for that axle. As you can see, this is really thick, like about 16 gauge or something. Plastic, if you want a metal axle. 16 gauge wire. There's our uh, front, or yeah, front wheel backs. Here we have our Cadillac mirror and those custom exhaust extensions, which won't be used. The custom side sport mirrors and our rear tail lights. Now, detail is pretty basic on the tires here. They're just very generic. The tread just wraps around this way, tread pattern. And then the back is black walls. But our Cadillac hubcaps are really nicely detailed with the Cadillac logo and the sunken in bits. And if you start to put together this as a rear tire, you'll see it goes together quite nicely. And then, well, there you go. It looks like an accurate Cadillac gigantic 15 or 16 inch tire. <laughs> anyway, there you are. 
And one thing I did keep was the chrome components and our skis. Now, again, I don't know what happened to the rolled pans and all that stuff. I did have a box at one point, many boxes of my spare parts, but when the High River Flood came, I had them at the store and a lot of them just disappeared, which is sad. But anyway, so we got our skis and our ski poles. There's the ends of the skis. The little spiky bits go into the snow. And then there's that blower, the coil, the uh, big pulleys for the blower. And there's the Cadillac overriders for our custom front bumper. So as you can see, the skis are actually kind of nice. They are sunken in a little bit, as they should be, to go over the snow. Typical 1970s, 60s, 70s style basic skis. Now, of course, we'd have all the feet locks and everything in there for your ski boots to go on and whatnot. They must have had some kind of lock for their boots. I'm not too sure back then. They're not molded on there, of course. But a lot of nice detail on the blower here. You can see like the dual carburetor or intakes that they have. I'm not totally familiar with the blower setup, but I do know that the AMT 57 Chevy kit had one of these in it as well. So it looks much like that, except on the Chevy one you put these in separately. This one they're molded in place. Then our little ski ends here. Overall, very cool. And now we can move on to our decal sheet. And here we have the decal sheet for our sport wagon. And as you can see, you got the nice wood grain going on here, as well as on the side panels. There's a bunch of snowflakes in here that you can put on your car. And then we have our ski sponsors. So if any of you are avid skiers, you could let me know in the comment section down below if any of these still exist or not, or if they're entirely made up. We have Garschmitz, which looks like it could be German or Austro-Hungarian or Hungarian. And an Austro-Hungarian. Uh, Slazinger, White Stag, Tanner, Sims, um, Sims Dynamic, I think. Darmouth Skis, Tyrol, not sure what this one is. Tyrol Tyrolina, and Edelweiss. So, as you can see, though, there is no license plates on here, but... This is quite an amazing decal sheet, and it's really hard with, I find with Johan kits, it's really hard to choose what you want to build this thing as, because you get one model, but you get all these cool decals and custom bits and whatnot, and you're sitting there struggling, going, I really want to build it stock to finish off my stock uh, models, but this stuff is so cool, like, uh, <laughs> you know, what do you do? So anyway, that is our decal sheet for our great model kit. And that completes our look at the 1970 Eldorado Customizing Kit by Johan. Well, I hope you enjoyed that amazing build, and if you own this kit, you owned it, <laughs> how would you build it? As the customized Cadillac going to the ski trip with the skis and poles on the back? or as a stock Eldorado from 1970, which is still a pretty cool car. Let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell, because every time I make a new model, you are the first to see it. And there's going to be a lot more cool cars as we move our way through the 1970s. And you don't want to miss next week's reveal. So until then, everybody, happy model building.